All I know is one minute I'm home, basking in the wonder of my golden years. We've done all we can do. Are you a comic book fan? Well, Deacon Hall is the arch nemesis. I hear you loud and clear, Lord. I'll be on my way. I tell you what I'm thinking, murder. That's what I'm thinking. Deacon, Deacon, listen, it's obvious the lights are on, but nobody's home. I'm not talking about this clown. I'm talking about the pastor. The Bible does say that the Lord shall return at the sound of a trumpet. Moving on. What about this clown? She needs to be around normal people. Do you have anybody black in this room? You know, I was thinking the same thing. You got any white folks? Oh, great. Now the clown's on the loose. Well, I never. Pastor, you're not gonna believe this. We have another clown heading toward the church. It gets, are they multiplying? Not exactly. Remember the lady in Sunday service with that big floppy hat, the one that Angel was picking the bugs out of? Mm -hmm. That one. Mm -hmm. Call Pastor McKnight. Well, I did. And he said that his world is now yours. <laughs> Reverend Jenkins, may I have a word with you? Have a seat. Thank you. May I serve you some tea? Oh, that'd be lovely. That's American breakfast. And we have sugar and cream. Oh, yes, sugar. And how may I help you, Beatrice, is it? Oh, it's Sister Winpag. My mama do something I don't know about. You need to do something about the clown. Pastry, perhaps. Oh, well, maybe just one. I'm trying to watch my girlish figure and all. Now, about the clown. Why do we need to do anything about the clown? Oh. I thought it would be obvious. Obvious? No, no not too obvious. Not. That outlandish outfit. <laughs> it's just it's not like us. Did you hear me? Yes, I did. I was just trying to recall the last time I saw someone with a hat the size of Texas and an entire flower garden uh -huh. sitting on top of it. <laughs> Bugs and all. Mm -hmm. Bugs and all. Mm-hmm. And indeed, I think the word outlandish did come to mind. Well, I never! I'm going to take this up with Pastor McKnight. Well, I never. And I never will. <laughs> you know, Ooh. at some point, one of the two of us is going to have to learn to behave. Uh, it won't be me. I won't be here, <laughs> Oh my goodness. People wonder why pastors leave the pastors. Yes. <laughs> All right. Serious. Serious. I have got to get these sermon notes done. So if you love me, will you please hold everything at bay? Three, four hours. Well, please. here's the thing. I actually need to go home and change for church tonight. I can lock the door, though. Sold. Okay. 
All right. See ya. See ya. Bye. Bye. Oh, honey, I am so, so sorry. Sure. I'll be there just as soon as I can. All right. Bye-bye. Pastor, sorry to bother you, but Pastor McKnight left a message while I was out to lunch. Mm -hmm. He asked if you would go visit one of his member's sisters who's really suffering from depression. Oh, girl. Is there a real emergency? They just put Miss Darcy in hospice, so she wants me there. He can't do the message tonight, so I'm starting from scratch. I mean, if it's an emergency, you know I'll go. Well, it didn't seem like it, but he did say that it's been going on for some time now. All right. Sometime. Okay, well, get me her phone number, and I'll call her as soon as I can. Okay. Okay. And by the way, her name is Mrs. Staley. Miss Staley. Miss Staley. Thank you. Okay. Appreciate you, girl. Appreciate you. You're welcome. That ought to do it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. My helper. Can't do it without you. Pastor, the toilet in the men's bathroom is overflowing. Like this day hadn't been long enough. <laughs> Any chance Deacon Hall's sitting on it? I'm serious, the water is heading toward the sanctuary. Yikes, you get the mop, I'll get the pail. Well, today certainly didn't go as planned, did it? <laughs> ah. Oh, help me. I forgot to call Miss Staley. That won't be necessary. Why not? Mrs. Staley's sister just called. Mrs. Staley committed suicide. Jenkins, are, are you Mrs. Staley's sister? Uh, I'm Marcy. I, I know who you are. You're that pastor, that reverend that didn't have enough time for my sister. Please, I am so sorry. No, no, no. You're, you're sorry to mean anything. You know she's dead because of you? I mean, get off my property. Get, get off. Lord, we need you. Good morning. Good morning. I was going to call you. Yeah. Pastor didn't come in today. Hey, she's not answering her phone. What's going on? Well, Pastor McKnight asked her to, you know, meet with one of his members that, that was suffering with depression. But with all everything going on around here, by the time she got around to it, the lady had killed herself. Oh, my word. What yeah. did Lynn do? Well, she ran over to their house, but they actually slammed the door in her face. Oh, no, they didn't. Yes. I'm, I'm going to go over her house and check on her. You know what? That'll be good. Lynn? Lynn? What? No wisecracks? No hide the silverware? Call the police? Lynn, I'm so sorry about Mrs. Staley's sister. I know you must be feeling devastated. Lynn, talk to me. You know I won't leave until you do. I just feel like I could have saved her. Like it's all my fault. Now you know better than that. 
Where was my discernment? My prophetic gift? Maddie, I should have known by the Spirit what she was going to do. Did it ever occur to you that she was not in her right mind? There was nothing you could have done to stop her. Yes, it did. But I just have to believe God would have given me the grace I needed to minister hope and, and life to her. Elena, it was depression. That's an illness. So what she needed was healing. Then why wasn't I there to pray for her healing? No, I'll tell you where I was. I was working on a sermon in a stinking toilet, Manny, a toilet. And that woman died. Lynn, you have responsibilities, lots of them, some of which just can't always wait. Yeah, right. Well, I didn't have any problem leaving my responsibility at that board meeting to go pray for Deacon Hall's dog. I don't know. Maybe I just don't have what it takes to pastor anymore. And those people, they're so precious. I think maybe they deserve more than I've got to give. Lynn, I know you. I, I know this hurts you terribly. But this church needs a pastor, and it appears evident that God has chosen you. Now, come on. Dry your tears, wipe your nose, and get about your father's business. You know, I will. I just have some time. I just need some time. Where is Pastor McKnight? He's helping with the funeral arrangements. Which means that we can focus on Pastor Lynn. This suicide thing has really thrown her for a loop. Well, Pastor shouldn't be thrown for a loop. Here are your keys, Dad. Thanks. And may I remind you that she was right by your side when you were thrown for a loop, when you thought Huckleberry was going to die. She was. And I can't think of many pastors that would drop everything just to come pray for somebody's dog. That's the truth. Has anybody heard from her since Mrs. Davis' death? Well, Gina said that she came in once and sat quietly in the sanctuary. And she stayed for a while and left. And I tried to call her and no one answered. Same here, no answer. She thinks that woman's death was her fault. And Maddie said that she's even doubting her call in the ministry. Maybe she's got more sense than I gave her credit. Stop it, this is serious. Well, so is church business too. Now who's gonna take care of the business while she's moping around? Deacon Raglan and I will. We love her. And if she needs time to heal, we're gonna see to it that she gets that time. Won't we, Deacon Raglan? Yes, we will. And let me make this abundantly clear that I'd rather have a pastor whose biggest fault is that she has a sensitive heart than one who has a heart that is full of pride and arrogance. That's right, Lamar. We need to focus on how to make her feel better. She needs to know that we love her and that we need her. Why don't I get with Gina and she can call Maddie for some suggestions? Good idea. Okay. Hey, Gina. Everybody's trying to figure out what can be done to help Pastor Lynn feel better. You think Maddie would have an idea or two? Hmm. You know what? Let's give her a call because she knows the pastor better than anybody. That's what I was thinking. Come on. <laughs> I'm so sorry. And no, the pastor's not available right now. But Deacon Hall will be glad to come over. And we will certainly keep you in our prayers. Bye now. M what's going on? Macy Graham, he fell and broke his hip, and they need you to get over to the hospital right away. 
That's the pastor's job. No, it's the priest's job. And according to 1 Peter and Revelations, we're the priests. Besides that, anybody that wants to be head deacon should jump at the opportunity to minister. And things are really changing around here. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you what. I'll go with you so that we can minister together. As it should be. And the two flesh shall become one. And I'll go to the Staley's to see if there can be some sort of reconciliation. Because if the sister stays angry with the pastor, it's going to eat her alive, both physically and spiritually. That's a wonderful idea. Did you all get in touch with Maddie? We did, and she had a great idea. You know how the pastor has three rescue dogs, right? Yes, we do. Well, here's the thing. She always had a standard poodle. Maddie says she loves that breed because they're smart and they're sensitive to their owner's feelings. Mm -hmm. So, well, the thing is her last one stayed right by her side mm -hmm. when she lost her husband. So what's the point? The point is that she doesn't have one now. How come? The last one actually died about six months ago and has really, really broken her heart. Well, what are you suggesting? That we get, get her, her one. <laughs> Do you all have any idea how much those dogs cost? No more than that ugly dog you take naps with every afternoon. Dad, so is it possible that she came running to our house to pray for Huckleberry because she knows what a dog can do for somebody? Well, I guess she did care a little. Well, here's what I suggest. You two do the research, see if there's any available, how much they cost. And we can begin by taking up a love offering right now. Love offering, come on. One day. Oh boy. Oh, take what you need. Good afternoon. I'm Deacon Ragland. Are you Mrs. Staley's sister? I'm Ursa, yes. You're just the person I'm looking for. May I come in and talk with you for a spell? Are you part of Reverend Jenkins' church? Well, yes, I actually am, but it's the Lord's church. And you're familiar with Pastor McKnight, aren't you? Yeah, I know him, yeah. He's also our pastor. Well, I, I guess so. Come, come on in. All right, thank you very kindly. Have a seat. Well, thank you. You know, y'all really do need to do something about that, Pastor Jenkins. She ain't doing nothing about your church. She's not helping your church any. Well, that's not really true. Pastor Jenkins, she has a lot of love for the people, and she's been a real blessing to our church. But my sister is dead because she didn't come that day. Mercy, may I call you Mercy? Yeah. That day, Pastor Jenkins had a lot on her plate. And had she known that it was an emergency, she would have come immediately over. But my sister is dead and is in hell because she didn't come that day. What? What makes you say that? My sister committed suicide. That's unforgivable, unrepentable sin. She's in hell. Well, let's talk this thing out. Did your sister accept Jesus Christ as her Lord and her Savior? Yes, she did. We did that as children. Did she love him? Did she serve him? She did, until she got sick. We had to take her to the doctor. And what did the doctor say? Well, now I'm just going to tell you, I don't understand depression, but that's what he said she had. And um, he gave her some medicine, that drugs that would help. Did they? No. No, they didn't help. Couldn't get the dosage right. She got worse. Mm -hmm. She st stopped thinking right. She went into this deep fog. Well, let me make this abundantly clear. Under no circumstances should Christians ever consider committing suicide. However, 
the drugs affected her thinking. And certain drugs, they caused you to think about committing suicide. So do you think our Heavenly Father will condemn her to eternal punishment? I don't know. Well, I do. Our loving Father has accepted your sister into his loving arms. And now she's with him forever throughout eternity, forever and ever. Are you sure about that? Absolutely. Oh, gee, that just really takes a burden off my heart. Mm. Good. Then let's get this burden of sin off of you. Me? Mercy, when you talk about Pastor Lynn, there's such anger in your eyes. I know, but it's because I miss my sister so much. I understand. But if you don't forgive Pastor Lynn, and let this hatred continue to be in your heart, your Heavenly Father won't forgive you. Do you want that to be your last dying breath? No. No, I don't. No, I don't. I don't. But what what do I do about that? Well, let's pray. Please. Please, let's pray. Father, we thank you for your mercy and your forgiveness. Lord, we thank you for your grace Mm. upon us right now. We ask, Lord, you to forgive us for unforgiveness. And and Lord, remove this burden of hatred from Mercy's heart right now in the name of Jesus. So that she can love like you love. Yes. And Jesus, we pray right now that you would heal her, God, from this situation of her family. And we pray for all the families that have been affected by suicide. yes. Yes, yes. Father, we thank you right now. And we love you for your mercy and your grace and your forgiveness in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Deacon. Amen. Thank you so much. Amen. I needed that. Amen. And we love you so much. Amen. Yeah, I'm kind of glad you came by. Amen. You got <laughs> Come on in, Maddie. The door's open. Good morning. Good morning. I'm sorry. I didn't expect y'all. I know. But we wanted to come by and see how you are doing. I'm doing okay. I'm just fighting this little sense of failure. And for that, I apologize. I know I should be more mature than that. But this thing has really devastated my heart. Lynn, we don't see this as a failure. And... You're the best thing that has happened to this church in quite a while. Yes, and we need the old you back. You've got us so excited about moving forward in God. And we can't do this if you're... If you're going to sit around and feel sorry for yourself. Ouch! That doesn't exactly make me feel any better. Well, maybe this will. Lamar? Well, I just wanted to say that everybody well, not exactly everybody, wanted you to know how much you're appreciated. When I get you home. Anyway, the Lord spoke to me and reminded me what a special dog could mean to someone, what Huckleberry means to me, and how the Lord used you to help me keep old Huck a little while longer. And we're sorry you lost your last poodle, so we decided to get you another one. You. Oh, mm. Mm. oh, he's gorgeous. And I've never had an apricot. What do you name him? I don't know. Yes, I do. George Washington McClintock. GW for short. Because he's going to be strong and smart and everybody's going to love him. Oh, I can't believe it. Hey, he's hey, gorgeous. Hey. Hey. Pastor Lee, guess what? This is called double portion. Two? Y'all got me two dogs? When the breeder found out why we were getting you these puppies, she thought that these two babies shouldn't be separated because they love each other so much. 
And because our gift is all about love, she gave this one to us too. Gave them to you? Mm. Ah, but they're so expensive. How, how'd you afford the first one? Everybody pitched in. Even all the new members from Pastor McKnight's church. And surprisingly, even Deacon Hall. Come here, you. I want to squeak those little cheeks. <laughs> oh, oh. I just don't know what to say. They're wonderful. Hello, everyone. This is Mercy, Hello. Mrs. Thaler's sister. Hello. Reverend Jenkins, I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. I was so ugly and so rude to you when you came to my house. I, I slammed the door in your face. I am so oh, honey, sorry. Don't, don't even think about it. They can help me understand it. They help me process this. And you couldn't have stopped my sister. You couldn't have stopped. I We are the ones that are so sorry for your loss. If there's anything I, we can do, we want to be there for you. Yes. Thank you. But the deacon helped me process her, her death and losing her and God's movement in it. I, I just am so sorry for how I treated you. Oh, we're good. We're good. Oh, so sorry. I just don't know how this day can get any better. I guess joy really does come in the morning, doesn't it? Yes, it does. I just... <sighs> now give me my puppies! Give me my puppies! Oh, look at this baby! Oh, you guys, they're gorgeous! My double portion!